The following section talks about what is reprehensible when revealing oneself. What is disliked? So it's not haram, but it is mm, not, not a good thing to do. So uh, in the book, we have like four things. Maybe I count them wrong, but feel free to correct me. Number one, you have to be sure that you do not urinate usually against the wind because if you do most likely the wind would send some of your urine back to your body and to your clothes and this would render it nudges so if you pray in this state your prayer would be invalid so you have to make sure that you uh, uh, protect yourself from any uh, ricochet or whatever you can call it coming back to your body from it secondly it is totally disliked to speak while answering the call of nature so two persons enter a public toilet and they are both answering the call of nature and they're chit-chatting about events about what happened in the office etc this is totally prohibited and it is inappropriate if you are in a toilet answering the call of nature and one speaks to you you should not reply to them the Prophet did not even reply to the Salam because he was in such a state and replying to the Salam is mandatory not only that you should not answer questions unless it is something of extreme urgency. So if you remembered while you're in the toilet that the child is on a sofa or on the bed and there's a possibility of it rolling over and falling down, yeah, you may bring that to the attention of someone who's outside. Other than that, you should not spend time and speak and chat chat while answering the call of nature. And the funny thing is, if you go to people's houses, you'll find in their toilets, next to the toilet seat, a pile of magazines. Of course not Islamic, but it shows you that people are enjoying sitting there, answering the call of nature, and reading car magazines or reading uh, mad magazines or comic books or novels and this is totally against the Sunnah this is the inhabitants of the devils the jinn so you are making yourself comfortable in their habitat this is not a very wise thing to do number three it is not recommended to urinate or to answer the call of nature in cracks on the ground or in holes boreholes or uh, uh, whatever because you don't know what is inside there it can be a home for a reptile scorpions something that is nasty and deadly it can be also the habitat of the jinn and you are harming them by urinating or defecating in their homes and there are stories in the seerah that Sa'd ibn Ubadah the head of Al-Khazraj tribe of Ansar may Allah be pleased with him was found dead and they heard the jinn chanting that we've killed the master of the Khazraj because of what he had done, etc. But this is a story. We don't know how authentic it, it is. And Allah Azza wa knows best. Uh, number four, it is not recommended to have on you something that has the name of Allah. So, in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ had a ring and this ring 
was not for decoration, rather it was a seal. Whenever he dispatched a messenger with a message, he sealed it. And the seal stated Muhammad Rasul Allah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. But whenever he entered the lavatories to answer the call of nature, he used to take it off and place it outside. So from this, the scholar said that it is not permissible to enter the lavatories with something that has the name of Allah on it. But if you live in Arab countries or some Muslim countries and they have the name of Allah on their back notes, on their currencies, so would you advise me to leave my wallet outside if I'm traveling in an airport or something? Definitely not. You know for certain that someone was, is going to snatch it and feast on it. So if you are afraid of something bad happening to it, there's no problem in doing that for necessities. And Allah Azza wa knows uh, uh, best. Okay, um, one point I forgot. In regards to facing and giving your back to the Qibla, this is only for urinating and defecating. Do not cascade this further. What do you mean? Well, so many times I see people fighting with others in the masjid because a person who was sitting on the ground for like two hours or an hour waiting from salat to salat tends to get a bit fatigued, tired, and he would extend his legs with his feet facing the Qibla. So often we see the elders who are blind followers of what their parents and uh, forefathers had taught them come and shout and fight. This is disrespectful. This is this and this is that. Who said it's disrespectful? Disrespect is in the heart. And they would say, do you sit like this in front of your mother or your father or the elders? This is a different thing. I would not lay down and put my right foot over my left foot in front of my father or mother or the elders. Yet Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, when he fought once with Fatima and went to the masjid and the Prophet came, he asked, where is Ali? She told him, He's in the masjid. He went and he found him on this state. Lying down on his back, erecting one knee and putting the other on top of it. So the Prophet ﷺ made him stand up and brushed the dust and, and the sand of his back and said, Qum Aba Turab, Qum Aba Turab. The Prophet didn't say to him, how dare you do such a thing in the masjid? There's nothing wrong with it. So many people's, people ask, my bed is facing the Qibla. When I sleep, my feet would be on the direction of the Qibla. No problem. It's against the Sunnah, but no problem. So we have to think in a broad sense rather than be stigmatized or only follow what the elders used to say without any uh, um, authentic opinion.